Megan Kelly, welcome to my first primetime network special. Here's what you're in for. Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. It's been a long nine months. It has been a long time. This is the first you and I have ever discussed what happened. It's on. You call women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. I thought it was a fair question. I thought it was unfair. You know, it's not a cocktail party. I want to talk for a minute about the tweeting. You would be amazed at the ones that don't retweet. Bimbo? Did I say that? Many times. Ooh. Okay. I don't want no distant job. And from rocky childhood to rocky horror, transgender star Laverne Cox is telling her story. Did you ever worry that your mom didn't love you? That's exactly what I worried about. I, um... Again. Also, it's been nearly two decades since O.J.'s first defense lawyer, Robert Shapiro, has spoken. Moments after the verdict, O.J. Simpson leaned over and whispered something in your ear. What did he say? You believe that the killer has never faced trial. And why can't Michael Douglas ever catch a break with the tabloids? Well, I was thinking when I heard that you had three months to live and you were sitting for this interview for me that maybe I was on your bucket list. <laughs> I'm honored. Tick tock. <laughs> Let's just dive right in. It's been over nine months since the first Republican presidential debate and an electric exchange between yours truly and Donald Trump. What happened between us then and after would make headlines around the globe. For those nine long months, he and I did not speak, nor did I ever respond to his attacks. Tonight, for the first time, I'll ask him about that and about his seemingly unstoppable rise to the top of the Republican ticket and nothing is off limits. America has never seen anything like the political juggernaut called Donald Trump. A businessman and reality TV star with no political experience burst onto the scene and electrified voters with big threats. We're gonna knock the hell out of ISIS. And big promises. We are going to win in every aspect of our lives. While explaining the art of the deal. We're gonna make great trade deals. He perfected the art of the insult. It's Rubio! Against rivals. Little Marco, little Marco. Lion Ted, Lion Ted. Detractors. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured. And the press. I would never kill him, but I do hate him. Including yours truly. Beginning with the very first Republican debate. Mr. Trump. One of the things people love about you is you speak your mind and you don't use a politician's filter. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account Only is Rosie several... O'Donnell. Mr. Trump did not like the question at all. For the record, it was well beyond Rosie O'Donnell. Yes, I'm sure. Does that sound to you like the temperament of a man we should elect as president? What I say is what I say. And honestly, Megan, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. I've been very nice to you, although I could probably maybe not be based on the way you have treated me, but I wouldn't do that. And he sent out a tweet that night. Wow, at Megyn Kelly really bombed tonight. And a retweet. Fox viewers give low marks to bimbo Megyn Kelly. Then he made this remark. You know, she gets out and she starts asking me all sorts of ridiculous questions. And, you know, you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes. Uh, blood coming out of her wherever. And he explained it this way. I was going to say nose and or ears because that's a very common statement. Blood pouring out of somebody's nose. It's a statement showing anger. That set off a firestorm. This is a candidate who's really had a history of some misogynistic statements. We've seen Donald Trump do this over and over again. The pundits said his attacks were political suicide. More fallout from the latest Republican debate. I don't know how he thinks he's going to win an election. His unfavorability with women is skyward. This weekend surely signaled the end of Trump's campaign. The pundits were wrong. An NBC News survey monkey poll shows Trump with 23 percent. A new poll number showed that Donald Trump is surging. The more Trump speaks, the more he spikes. It didn't matter what he said or how he said it. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. When Mexico sends its people, they're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. Voters were angry, and they liked that he was angry, too. In January, he skipped the next Fox News debate. Megyn Kelly's really biased against me. Do you really think she can be fair at a debate? Which set off a new torrent of tweets. 
80,000 tweets directed towards Megyn Kelly. Broke it, uh, broke it down to see what the most popular words were. Crazy Megyn Sick. Kelly. Crazy. Bimbo. 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 Days later, he lost the Iowa caucuses. But Trump went on to win and win some more. Another big win for Donald Trump. A huge win for Donald Trump. And then a new debate. Nice to be with you, Megan. Great to have you nice here. You. You're looking well. You're looking As well. As are you. <laughs> Followed by more fallout and a call to boycott the Kelly file. Can't watch crazy Megan anymore. Okay. Finally in April, a meeting at Trump Tower. The meeting was at my request and Mr. Trump was gracious enough to agree to it. Donald Trump and his arch nemesis, Megyn Kelly, are making peace. There are signs of a truce this morning between Their Trump and Their feud apparently diffused. You met with Megyn Kelly today. How did that go? 17 candidates down, and Trump is the last man standing, the presumptive Republican nominee. Let's begin. Thank you for sitting down with me. Thank you very much, my honor. Been a long nine months. It has been a long time, I agree. I want to ask you about the beginning of your campaign. There had to be a moment on stage at a campaign rally or one night after a win where it occurred to you, I could actually be the president. When was that? Well, I think the debates were really a big thing. And not to bring up an unpleasant debate, but you know, that first debate was pretty amazing and 24 million people watching it, a record on cable television. And I think that meant something. I think that first debate meant something because I felt very, very comfortable with the subject and I felt very comfortable with the people I was competing against. Let's talk a little bit about um, litigation because you, you have threatened to sue many people in the course of the campaign. But of course, if you wind up president, you're not going to be able to do that either. Well, can can yes, you go four years well, without threatening to sue anybody? Well, what China's done to us is but you, maybe you do the world, you know, you do, through, you know, you do have methods of suing countries. It's going to be okay? a busy law firm. No, no, it's going to be busy, but uh, it's a little different. And it's also a tactic for me. It's a business for me, and I've been successful, and I've, you know, used litigation, and sometimes I use it maybe when I shouldn't, and sometimes I don't. Have you made any mistakes in this campaign? You had said publicly you thought the retweet about Heidi Cruz was a mistake. Let me just... Well, I said I could have done without it, to be exact. I mean, I could have done without well, you it. You said a mistake. Are, are you walking no, I, that I back? No, no, I'm not walking it back, but, I, but I, I actually didn't say it that way. I said... I could have done without it. I mean, but I, it was it, a it mistake, wasn't it? I mean, um, that, that you shouldn't have done I, that, I wish right? I didn't do it. Although, you know, I guess you could say she's fair game because she's very much involved with the campaign. But I don't but know. That, she just seems like a nice woman. Looks. Well, you know what? I have millions of followers at Real Donald Trump. I have millions of followers. I have millions I'm, of followers. I'm familiar. Yes, you are. The thing that gets me in trouble is retweets. Mm -hmm. The retweet is really more of a killer than the tweets. The tweets I seem to do pretty well with. So that's one, the Heidi Cruz thing. Let me just give you a, ahead, a, sure, a list of sure. a couple and tell Go me ahead. whether you have any regrets on it. The, the comment about John McCain, you prefer people who weren't captured. Um, the comment about Carly Fiorina's face. But do you regret any of those comments? Uh, yeah, I guess so, but you have to go forward. You make a mistake, you go forward, and you, you know, you can correct the mistake. But to look back and say, gee whiz, I wish I didn't do this or that, I don't think that's good. I don't even think, in a certain way, I don't even think that's healthy. I want to talk a little bit about your family. Your, your older brother, Fred Jr., was an alcoholic and died at a relatively young age. When I say his name, what does that bring up for you? Well, he was great. Uh, he was the most handsome person. He was a uh, really smart guy, really, really smart guy. He had everything. But at a certain age, he started drinking a little bit, a little more, a little more, and ultimately it was a big problem. And he'd say, don't ever, ever drink and don't ever. And I'll tell you what, I never have never had a glass of alcohol. Never? I, mean, I, I have other problems, okay? But <laughs> what are they? Get specific. I don't want to talk to you about that. <laughs> I, that I can't talk about. That would be too good. You've been divorced twice. Yes. Did you learn something about relationships, about love, about yourself? Well, you have to put more into it. I put so much into my business that I didn't put enough into the relationship. And I see that, and I've learned that. I mean, I have learned that. Sometimes there's nothing you can do about that because that's the way you are. I mean, if somebody told you that you have to ease up, you can only work half the number of hours that you're working, I don't know if you'd be able to do that. 
I'd give it a try. No, but even if they said you'd have an even better relationship with your husband, I hear it's just great. But, you know, <laughs> I mean, I don't know that you'd be able to do that. Has anyone ever hurt you emotionally? Well, I think the big thing would be maybe the death of my brother. That was, you know, the hardest thing for me to take. That was very tough because it's, you know, unnatural. And he saw a certain potential in me, and he would say, don't ever have a drink. Now, I don't carry that far with people. I don't, I never had a drink. But, you know, people can have a drink, and they can do socially. But, you know, that can lead. You tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like you're trying to get out of bounds on the emotional question to the, the subject of alcoholism, which we discussed. Has it happened that somebody has, has done something to you, you know, not a death in the family, but has done something to you to wound you? Well, you know, I don't know. I, I can say this. Uh, it would be something I could certainly think about and, you know, come back with an answer, all right? No, here. it's okay. But I, mean, but I, I will say this. Um, when I'm wounded, I go after people hard, okay? And I try and unwound myself. Most kids between the ages of 6 and 16 have been bullied at some point in their lives. Were you ever bullied? No, I wasn't. But I have seen bullying, and bullying doesn't have to just be as a child. I mean, I know people are bullied when they're 55 years old. It can happen I mean, when you're 45. It's, it's, you know, it happens, right? But you got to get over it. Fight back, do whatever you have to do. Let me ask you about that, because most American parents try to raise their kids to not bully, to not name call, to not tease, not taunt. How can they effectively bring that message when the front runner for the Republican nomination does all of those things? Well, I, I do it really, you know, I've been saying during this whole campaign that I'm a counterpuncher. You understand that. I'm responding. Now, I then respond times maybe 10. I don't know. I mean, I respond pretty strongly. But in just about all cases, I've been responding to what they did to me. So it's not a one-way street. Let's talk about us. Okay. I asked you a tough question about women. Bimbo? Over your life, Megan, you've been called a lot worse. Now, if you could go back and wave a magic wand mm -hmm. and, and have been born with a female body, would you do that? Let's talk about us. Okay. We were always friendly. Right. Good relationship. Right? And then came the August 6, 2015 debate, and I asked you a tough question about women using only the words that you had used. I thought it was a fair question. Why didn't you? I thought it was unfair. I thought, it, first of all, I didn't think it was really a question. I thought it was more of a statement. That's the first question that I've ever been asked during a debate, and I've never debated before. I mean, my whole life is a debate, but I've never actually debated before. And I'm saying to myself, man, what a question. And then, of course, then you have Brett doing his thing, so I'm saying to myself, I got two hours of this? I don't really blame you because you're doing your thing, but from my standpoint, I don't have to like it. Afterward, you said you didn't feel that the moderators had been nice. But do you think it's the journalist's role to be nice to presidential candidates at a debate? No, fair. I don't care if they're nice. They have you to use fair. the word nice. Well, okay. Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I might have said they weren't nice, but that doesn't mean they have to be nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've known many... You know, it's not a cocktail party. No, no. I tell you what, in a certain way, what you did might have been a favor, because I felt so good about having gotten through... I said, if I can get through this debate with those questions, you can get through anything. You seemed to stay angry f for months. Yeah. Was that real, or was that strategy? Well, I'm a real person. I don't say, oh, gee, I'm angry tonight, but tomorrow you're my best friend. See, I do, I do have a theory that, you know, when somebody does it, and this could happen again with us. I mean, it could be uh, even doing this particular interview. I have great respect for you that you were able to call me and say, let's get together and let's talk. To me, I would not have done that. I don't say that as, an, you know, as a positive. I think it's a negative for me. And you walk into Trump Tower, you didn't, we didn't have, like, on a neutral site or over at Fox or something that would be a whole different thing, and I wouldn't have done it. I think I'm the doormen are still it. recovering. I, I, I think the whole building's recovering. You know, people are going like, <laughs> this can't be possible, right? And this is the first you and I have ever discussed what happened between us over the past nine months, because you and I did not talk about that. We didn't me. discuss it. No, we didn't discuss it. So when you look back on the, on the past nine months from that first debate to now, any regrets? Uh, absolutely, I have regrets. I don't think I want to discuss what the regrets are, but absolutely, I could have done certain things differently. 
I could have maybe used different language uh, in a couple of instances. But overall, I, you know, I have to be very happy with the outcome. Mm -hmm. And I think if I didn't conduct myself in the way I've done it, I don't think I would have been successful, actually. If I were soft, if I were, you know, presidential, okay, presidential. It's, in a way, it's a bad word because there's nothing wrong with being presidential. But if I would not have fought back the way I fought back, I don't think I would have been successful. You're no longer just Donald Trump businessman or Donald Trump host of Celebrity Apprentice. Now you're steps away from the presidency. Have you given any thought in this position to the power that your messaging has on the lives of the people you target and on the millions of people who take their cue from you? I have, I have. And I see suffering. I mean, I see tremendous suffering, and I understand it. I have a very big heart. A lot of people don't understand that, but people that know me do. And we have to take care of our country. And I do feel America first. I mean, America has been fourth and fifth and ninth. I mean, but you know what I'm saying. When Donald Trump do. targets somebody and says, this person is bad, that person is bad, it creates a firestorm in those people's lives. And many of these people are so-called civilians who haven't put themselves out there as public figures. But it's in response to something that they did, or it's but in response to But you are so powerful. Something. You are so powerful now. I don't view myself as that. I mean, I view myself as a person that, like everybody else, is fighting for survival. I, that's all I view myself as. And I really view myself now as somewhat of a messenger. You know, this is a, this is a massive thing that's going on. Mm -hmm. These are millions and millions of people that have been disenfranchised from this country. I was in front of a group the other day, 25, 000, at least 25,000 people. The place was going crazy. And I said, I'm like the messenger. It's true, but they're, they're listening to you and they're, they're taking their cue from you. So that's the question is whether now so close to the Oval Office, whether you will take that responsibility seriously and change your tone to try to be more unifying and less divisive. I do take it very seriously and I understand what's going on. And when I see the fervor, when I see 25,000 people that have seats and not one person during a, an hour speech will sit down. I say, sit down, everybody, sit down. And they don't sit down. They refuse to sit down. I mean, that's a great compliment. But I do understand the power of the message. There's no question about it. I want to talk for a minute about the tweeting. Okay. Set the scene for me, because I know where I was when I was on the receiving end of a lot of those tweets, but I have always wondered where you were. I'm picturing, like, a crushed velvet smoking jacket, you know, chaise lounge, Slippers. Maybe, maybe not as fancy as that. Maybe probably a lot less. Walk us through it. You said it's you if it's past this, seven in the evening. This weekend, I picked up 114,000 people. But well, what do you do? Do you pick up your iPhone and actually yes. tweet yourself? Usually after seven or eight o'clock, I'll do it myself. But during the day, if I'm in the office, I have a number of people that I'll just call out a tweet to. It's always my writing. You call out exclamation point. I do, I'd say exclamation point. I do, you know me well, you know me well. No, I'll say exclamation point. Like I'm familiar. Shows. So they'll type it out for me real fast, bring it in, I'll be in a meeting, blah, 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 boom, put an exclamation point here and I'll send it in. So, so I don't do the physical. Now, after, after like seven or eight o'clock, if I'm home, I'll do it myself. And I have fans, you probably learned, and I didn't do this for this reason, but when you and I were having our little difficulty, um, you probably had some pretty nasty tweets sent your way. I, I don't want to say, but I've heard that. I don't want that to happen, but I have fans, they really love... We have an unbelievable bond. We have an but unbelievable You retweet some of those. It's not just the fans. Yeah, but not the more nasty ones. You would be amazed at the ones I don't retweet. Bimbo? Uh, well, there was a retweet, yeah. Did I say that? Many times. Ooh, okay. Excuse me. <laughs> What do you think with, I mean... Not the most horrible thing, you know, again, politically, not the most <laughs> Over your life, Megan, you've been called a lot worse. Is that right? Wouldn't you say? You know, you've had a life that's not been that easy. And It's not about me. It's not, it's not about me. It's about no, the, the no, messaging to, no, no. to young girls and yeah. to but again, other it's, women. It's a certain amount of fighting back. You know, it's, it's a modern-day form of fighting back. I mean, it really is, but... Um, You're going to stop that as president? Well, I'm going to stop it about you now because <laughs> I, I think I like our relationship right now, so I'm certainly not going to do it with you. Yeah, I, I think now so. Now you have my I, cell I, I phone number. This. That is actually I much did. more efficient. You gave me your cell phone and number. And you promise you would not use it for evil. I don't know. I promise. I promise. I, you'll never see that. You'll never see that. If you don't become president, 
Will this all have been for nothing? Or will you have changed America? So I got a call from a great writer who said to me, congratulations. I said, congratulations on what? He said, what you have done has never been done before. I said, what have I done? He said, he talked about different things. I said, well, unless I win, I can't do the changes. I can't make America great again. I can't lower taxes and, and make our military strong and get along with other nations, frankly, that we don't get along with right now, but do better with them, you know, so they're not ripping us off like they all are. But I said, unless I win, I can't do that. He said, no, no, you're wrong. What you have done has never been done before, and it'll go down in history. And I appreciate and I don't want to really talk about it because in case it doesn't work out, I guess I'd rather have that narrative. But I will say this, if I don't go all the way and if I don't win, I will consider it to be a total and complete waste of time, energy and money. Mr. Trump, thank you thank very, you very much. much. It's been fascinating. Thank you very much. I appreciate Thanks, it. Megan. So when you told your mother that you identified as female, what was her reaction? The first thing my mother said was, but you have such big hands and feet. You would think if she was going to object to a body part, she would have chosen something other than the hands and the feet. And later in the show, more Donald Trump with a stunning yes, yes. admission. I knew it! Let's have some fun. Go ahead. Okay, I want to ask you rapid-fire questions about okay. Donald Trump. Number one, favorite movie? Citizen Kane. Favorite book? Other than the Bible or the art of the deal? Um, all Quiet on the Western Front. What was the last book you read? Do you get any time to oh, read? No, it's so long because now I read passages. I read, I read uh, areas. I'll read chapters. I just, I don't have the time. You know, when was the last time I watched a baseball game? Mm -hmm. I'm watching you all the time, okay? I'm, I knew it! I'm watching O'Reilly all the time. I'm <laughs> watching on, be, Hannity. Be honest. I'm watching, I have to... You didn't really boycott. Uh, a little bit, not as much as, <laughs> not as much as I want people to believe. But I don't have the time. I would love to sit down and read a book, but I just don't have the time anymore. Well, in addition to the Kelly file, I have been working on a project, a book which I'm unveiling right now. It's called Settle for More, my life motto, ever since I was an unhappy lawyer years ago. The book shows how I did just that, with some tears and laughs along the way. And yes, for the first time, I will speak openly about my year with Donald Trump. You can pre-order it now wherever books are sold. It hits stores November 15th. My thanks to Donald Trump, Laverne Cox, Robert Shapiro, and Michael Douglas for sitting down with me on my first special. And thank you all for watching. Good night. Is it even tougher when you're with Catherine? Is it, then it's the double. Yeah. I mean, a little bit, but I mean, that's, that's a high quality prop. Why do you do element.